Hi everybody, this is Brad uh, for the Laughing Lich Corporation, or LLC. Uh, so, this is uh, our, a mashup of the recent TPK against the Void Dragon. Uh, it's also split with a few interviews by uh, the other players and the DM. I just wanted to get a little bit of insight onto what they thought about the TPK, since they are relatively rare for uh, either inexperienced groups or even experienced groups, just depending on how games are run. So I wanted to give uh, our viewers a little bit of insight onto what they should expect and uh, how we handled it. So thank you so much, and hope you enjoy. Sorry, which tunnel are we in? Uh, so you're in one of these tunnels, and you get to this point right here, and this oh, end. Oh, the dead end? It's not a dead end. The river continues flowing, and it looks to be underneath uh, the tunnel, so you could either jump in or turn around. Up to you. You feel very confident that you followed the tracks correctly. Then we're jumping in. Are you all jumping in? I... Uh, Anybody who can't swim can get into a bag of holding. I I guess I can go. All right. You all jump in, and as you do, you are swept underneath this tunnel, going very quickly, and you eventually, after about a minute of holding your breath, you guys feel a lurch as you come down the waterfall and enter... The lair. The lair! Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to need you all to put your tokens right here. Kalor, you are right here. Okay. Ooh, magma. Magma. So tokens over here, guys. Magma. I will drop your own golem as well. It's probably that sized. Me, Kurt. Can you give me uh, access to that token? Probably would have been first. So. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, okay. I'm not you in the have turn order to... yet. So, you guys come down this waterfall, just wee all the way down, and you see Kalor at the other end of uh, this hallway, hallway cavern, standing on top of a pinnacle as Nid Kathong is looking at all of you and just saying, you weren't invited back here. What what brings you to this intrusion? Listen here, scaly boy. You're not going to suck the magic out of our friend. Yeah, we're done dragging these nuts all around your cavern. <laughs> dragon, dragging these nuts, anyone? No? Oh my god. <laughs> Slow you clap out. That better than the last time I tried uh, flirting with a dragon. Just gonna if slow it, cut that one out. I was never going to suck the life out of Kalor. But now that you mention it, Kalor does possess power. Nowhere near my power. But he could one day. And any threat to me is a threat to Dromgard. And I know that I cannot have that. And you showing up here just must be the sign of the universe trying to tell me that this just isn't going to work. There are others like Kalor, I'm sure. Well, let's see what you have. All right. First, what you guys see in front of you, uh, I'm going to assume you all swim to like the edge of the, like right there. I'm just going to assume that. Yeah. Uh, so you're not in the water anymore. And he just says, Kalor, I'm sorry, but your friends are the ones who are holding you back. If you would have let them go, you could have been great. Even greater than what I have become. But then, I wouldn't have it. I would not have it at all. And you see him begin to transform getting larger and larger as his skin turns black. And then you see specks of light coming out from all parts of his body until you see the brightest light in his, the center of his check, chest as he becomes a gargantuan creature and you see in front of you 
the ancient void dragon no. known as oh, oh god we're in trouble we're dead CPK. we're so dead hey hey kaylor since you're so yeah. fucking low in the initiative could you please for the love of god level up to level 11. hey jesse uh glad to have you on for the this interview i decided i want to do a few interviews with everyone uh, about the tpk we had on the 24th um just uh, to kind of get everyone's feelings and uh, ask a few questions and you're kind of my main interest as you're the dm so you had a little bit more insight to it um <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm happy to be here all right well we're gonna go right into the first question um so obviously the one that we had just gone through was planned um but how would you um what do you do if you accidentally make an encounter into a tpk so i've thought about this a, a lot as a dm and i think when i first started out uh i would have just said well it is what it is roll new characters now that i have a lot of experience under my belt i don't think that a tpk unless it is at the very end of the campaign or at a very significant boss uh that it should require brand new characters uh i i believe that if there is a tpk there should be some sort of an afterlife a, a secondary adventure or instead of dying you get captured or instead of uh you dying you get put into some sort of like a soul gem and you're trapped away for a hundred years and that could have some huge world building event happen uh but i i don't want to just kill players just out of the blue, uh, unless it is a very significant moment at the very end of a campaign and, you know, something like that. But yeah, that's generally my feelings on TPKs. Right. So if they do happen to happen either through planning or on your behalf or not enough planning on the player's half, it can be turned into a storytelling uh, vehicle rather than just, well, everyone's got to roll new characters now. Exactly. Okay. Um, so if, so leading up to that, if you make an encounter difficult on purpose, but the intent is to let everyone come out alive or mostly alive, um, and the players are unprepared or don't handle it accordingly, do you change it leading up to the encounter or do you just let the encounter play out as you've made it up until that point? Uh, I will try to use as many DM tricks as I can. Uh, maybe I would very subtly warn the players that they are about to enter a very, very dangerous location and they need to have their wits about them or uh, drop hints from NPCs saying, oh, don't go there. That's where, you know, people do not return ever or something along those lines. Uh, it's always good to challenge your players. Of course, I think that having... Having good challenges is what makes players think, oh crap, how do I prepare for this next chapter or this next encounter? Uh, so having those challenging uh, encounters and bosses are really important to make sure that your players stay on their toes so that when you do throw the super challenging uh, encounter at them, they they know how to handle with their character. Uh, and that's, again, I, I want to encourage my characters to know everything about their spells, their features, their abilities, so that they can use everything to its fullest potential, because I'm going to be using my fullest potential as much as I can with my monsters. Uh, if it happens and it's in the middle of battle, um, it depends on the type of battle. If it's just a run-of-the-mill dangerous encounter in the Underdark with that's not really... It's like a random encounter. Uh, I'll definitely pull some punches, because uh, that would just be a shitty way to die. But if it's a, a chapter-ending boss... Uh, some sort of a, a high tier uh, uh, encounter that was planned for ahead of time that the players knew was coming up. I am not holding back punches. Okay, okay. Um, so you, you mentioned a little bit of uh, character preparation. Um, for all intents and purposes, I feel like we weren't exactly prepared to find what we did once we entered the Dragon's Lair. Did we really miss anything that would have clued us into maybe we should let things play out and stay out of that room at all costs. Uh, so I, I did hint way back in Vethan's hold that uh, Aaron was kind of lying uh, and that it is a place of a dragon lair. Um, as for what kind of a dragon, I didn't say. You guys had already faced a dragon and uh, seemed to do pretty well with it. But uh, I wanted to 
Uh, I knew that this encounter was going to lead to a TPK, so I almost didn't want to give you too much information because I did want to kill you. Um, but but yeah, I, I definitely think that I've dropped I dropped enough hints as well as the kind of the uh, atmosphere once you got through the uh, lay tunnel and it started to gravity started to be weird. You heard whispers. Uh, people started to act a little bit weirder, like uh, Kalor and uh, Cinna started to get really curious about things. Then you guys should have known that something very powerful and something weird was afoot. Uh, so that should have been a few warnings. Yeah, uh, I was actually looking through that the other day, and I was like, man, we we missed a lot because we also just we didn't even bother checking out. Uh, Cinna and Kalor, when it was sure kind of obvious that they were under the influence of something else. But that's um, very true. I, I don't know. Um, do you think there was any way we could have made it out of that encounter, either all of us or some of us alive in any way? At yes, all? I I do think so. Uh, I think. Uh, Sporlino was trying to wind walk out of there or gaseous form out of there and I think that that was actually a, a big worry of mine. I was worried that she was going to escape and then have you guys die and now I would run this encounter for just the four of, or five of you without Sporlino and I was like well I don't want that to happen. I want you you all to experience this uh, but if I, I tried to uh, keep Sporlina there as best as I could using the abilities that the ancient void dragon had at his disposal yeah he uh was pretty uh <laughs> pretty powerful uh but it does lead into another question i had which is um if the tpk is planned as a storytelling device or not necessarily killing all of them but capturing them to move the story forward in a necessary way how would you prepare to keep all of the characters there so you can move the story forward with all of them rather than being like, well, someone escaped, so you have to make a new character at this point. Yeah, that, that see again, that's the tough one. Uh, when I designed the encounter, I made that waterfall to be kind of like a one-way ticket into the domain and be really difficult to get out. Um, so with Sporolina, I didn't think about the gaseous form or Windwalk, so uh, that would have been kind of really tough, but I think I would have tried to kill her uh, through the, um, what's it called, the cultists. Uh, as she tried to get back, maybe they would have seen her and started throwing fireball after fireball at her. Um, a some so something along those lines, I would have probably tried to still kill her with the cultists, because they would have acted to defend their leader. Uh, so that does make sense. Yeah, um, escaping the dragon would have been the much harder part in retrospect, but we still would have had to fight every there to get out so I don't necessarily think we could have escaped um, intact but um, the last question I have for you is uh, what would be the best advice you have to either new players or players unfamiliar with relatively hard encounters on how to avoid uh, a TPK mm, work together uh, make sure that you know not just your character sheet, but make sure you understand the, the abilities and spells and features of your allies. Uh, it really does help a lot when you can combine different things, different spells and different features, so that uh, you can coordinate ahead of time, uh, not during battle, but ahead of time. Uh, if I do this, then maybe you can do this in conjunction with it. So uh, I think that that can be really powerful in a group uh, to be able to work together or to make make tactics. Hey, if I go on this side, I want you flanking on the other side. Or hey, stay stay out of sight so that you don't get hurt and you can pop a healing spell if we go down in the front line or something along those lines. So having those tactics ahead of time before battle uh, is definitely really helpful and knowing your other character's abilities. Yeah, um, I yeah. Like I said, I don't think we particularly planned this encounter well. Um, normally we do a pretty good job, especially uh, against Yorgoth. We did a lot of planning for that one. Um, so I definitely think we could have done better, obviously. As you said, this was the end goal was for all of us to die. So I don't think it really would have mattered too much how much preparation we did, maybe. Yeah, it, it honestly, you did do a lot of damage to the Ancient Void Dragon uh, to the point where I was actually kind of fearful when Elora 
just dumped in all that smite and tattoo damage. Uh, she did quite a bit, uh, but not enough to uh, kill the dragon, but I was getting worried for a moment that if, if more of you had been up and just threw your strongest spell and strongest feature at it, you probably could have killed it. Uh, and then... Uh, it, it wouldn't have been what it would have been, but definitely when you guys... Uh, well, I, I won't share that right now. <laughs> Gotta keep some secrets, right? Exactly. All right. Well, that's all the uh, questions I have for you. Thank you so much for uh, participating in the interview, and uh, hopefully I'll see you on Monday. Yeah, thank you so much. All right. Hey, Dan. Uh, glad you could join me for uh, the TPK interview. We're just trying to get everyone's opinion on... Uh, I believe the 24th, no, the 17th session, uh, where we unfortunately faced off against an ancient void dragon. So I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, uh, gauge your response, and uh, let's get started. So the first question I have for you is, uh, how did you feel? Oh, actually, you were in the room before everyone else. So I have a little couple different questions for you. Um, how was talking to what we now know is the ancient void dragon uh, before we all entered the room and started combat. Very sketchy. I was assuming something bad was going to happen to Kalor, but not quite that bad. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I was not expecting that. Although I do have to say when I eventually I got chopped and there wasn't a big uh, prompt for a uh, death thing, I was, I, I, I was slightly skeptical that I was actually dead. Yeah, well, I think it was more. This thing is way too powerful, and it when it eats you, it eats you, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, so you were obviously talking to him earlier, but you didn't really know how dangerous the situation was going to be. How did you feel once he, once Jesse actually introduced the dragon? I guess. Oh god, I was I was like, oh man, this is this is gonna be a lot. I was like, okay, like maybe Jesse's finally trying to like step up the oh, oh man, the party might die situation. Uh, but it seems like a little bit of an odd moment for it. But then that's also kind of cool. I'm kind of excited about that. I like having more tension. Uh, and then let's see what else. Um, also, I've never, like, in previous campaigns run into a Void Dragon, so, like, I knew, like, I'm like, okay, this is, like, a, a weirder type of dragon, so it's gonna be an oh shit thing, but I didn't quite realize how much of an oh shit thing. Um, I, I was fully expecting him to be some kind of, like, power-leeching magic user instead of something like that. Um, so that was definitely a shock. Um, it, it was fun finally get, getting to try out Disintegrate right after... Uh, immediately leveling up because I forgot to like an idiot. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad I got to get that off before getting promptly eaten. Um, oh man, yeah. That was that was a fun bit. I I I, I that was like an interesting twist. I like that. Um, yeah, I don't think. We, yeah. I don't think we've ever really had a fight that wasn't a boss fight as hard as this. Obviously. Mm -hmm. Nothing we fought has been as hard as this because pretty much all of us have always made it out alive. So yeah, and mm. I mean while we're still kind of starting to get there, I think like the other thing was is that like when we faced those bigger, harder pa battles in like our previous campaigns, this was one of the first ones where we had one that was this challenging that was this much earlier in the levels where like there's a greater chance that depending on the situation that when you die like you actually die instead of like you know because like once you start getting up into the teens and stuff you know it's kind of like unless it's like a tpk if you die it's kind of eh. yeah there's so many ways to bring someone back so um do you think there was any way we could have avoided the fight with the void dragon obviously you may have a little bit more insight um <sighs> Because I believe that, I can't remember the guy's name, but the Void Dragon had said that he wasn't planning on doing anything to you before we arrived. Yeah, um, maybe, but like, I don't know. I feel like 
if we had i feel like i don't know at least my impression was that if i had gone along with that it would have been basically like um as far as like the magic users it consumes so to speak basically fattening the calf up before consuming it right but I, like like yeah well with that if it's fattening up the calf it would have been a little bit easier to fight him because i assume that would have meant we would have a few more levels maybe would have yeah. would have had more of a chance we might have had time to figure it out and plan it out more like something like that like pretend to be like oh yeah we'll join your cult secretly we'll not and we'll figure out what's going on but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh maybe maybe i think there's a possibility of that there was a, or was a possibility of that yeah i think we um, kind of screw the pooch uh we, we didn't really do a whole lot of planning once we were like yeah. in there it was very fast like yeah once you went in alone I, you're I, like this is not good yeah. we gotta do something i, I got a feeling that some of that might have been a little bit from the intentional from the setup but i mean also like because i think like another part of the setup which definitely helped to like us like immediately leading into it was getting the uh um me and oh, i forgot who else failed the i think it was a wisdom saving throw to um you guys not were... get all enchanted to be yeah to be all curious and stuff so then we just kind of were so then i was kind of just like you know trying to force myself into role playing that and just being like oh yeah i'm gonna ask this sketchy guy a bunch of questions like a kid going into the uh candy van yeah and i definitely shouldn't be going into you just can't help yourself there's free candy <laughs> in there yes there is and then then and, and and now we're, we're we're trying to take some more candy from some scary ladies, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that pans out. Yeah, um, I feel like we kind of might have once again screwed the pooch. We didn't really do a whole lot of planning after as well, which oh, is weird. Yeah, we went. Yeah, no. Immediately yeah. from something where we didn't plan, and it went horribly. To hey, let's do that again. This is going to be great the second I time. I, I think so exactly. I, I, I don't know. I, I think like um, I, I kind of like how there's more repercussion stakes on this, and that's one thing I've been enjoying with the last couple of sessions. Um, is that we've we, we've been facing situations where we where we come across something, and then it, and then we're like, oh crap, may, maybe we shouldn't have fucked with this thing. Yeah. Um, I definitely like yeah. having consequences because. Um, oh yeah. It's maybe a little bit unorthodox, but I do actually enjoy when my characters die. Because that means yeah. I didn't do something right, and I have to learn. I, I do too. Time. Like I, I, I prefer it whenever there's sessions wherever you have. Um, because that's one thing with like some of the like very orthodoxly run like D and D cam like games I've run I've, seen, I've been in in the past that I like eventually got bored of after like I first got into Five E was ones where like everything that I ran into would either be like retroactively or preemptively was like leveled to be something we could handle. Or it would always be like Desex Machina it away, and like I, I like occasionally having things in the world where there's like good clues and ways for me to do checks to figure out or infer that they're not that there's someone or something I shouldn't fuck with yet. But like if I do fuck with them, they're like a scary thing that I need to like get away from, <laughs> or yeah. might have to just die to if I can't get away from it because. Uh, you know, you, you got to keep some of the tension in the game. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, obviously, we've been talking a little bit about uh, how we enjoy a little bit more difficult encounters, a little bit more uh, high stakes, as you will. Uh, but do you think this particular instance, in reference to the TPK, how do you think that this will influence your view or shape your view of how to view encounters as a player and as in character uh oh um like in character i think there's going to be some processing on that i think i think i think a lot of that will depend on how this last little bit of the romp with the uh two women uh goes but i think he'll be even more skeptical of certain people um seeing as he's already a little bit of the paranoid type uh especially with the drow as everybody knows um <laughs> but yeah no and I, and I think it's like a player i mean like i think it'll like it won't be a completely new playing thing that i've never done but definitely for playing with you guys it might be resulting more in well actually it's not a system that i have like 
I played like a one shot as a player um, during one of our off weeks, but I never actually was. Um, but I was mostly just like, as far as the actual campaign, I would just game master in um, the another game system that's a lot more cutthroat dark fantasy. Um, there's <laughs> there's there's a lot of high risk reward consequences. Like part of it's kind of a hex crawler across the uh, the woods and. Half of the random encounters you have are just like, well, not quite half, but I would say maybe like a good like 10% are ones that you just like, you cannot win against until you're like crazy high level. So basically it's just like you roll to either preemptively see it and avoid it or to rapidly run away from it as soon as you come across it. Cause like, like there's like a red mist of death with demons inside of it. And you can't, you don't, if you don't have magic weapons and stuff, you can't fight it. And then in that system also, if you have, um, spells um proportional to the spell's power and relative to your like spell casting ability um there's always a chance that you basically have like pretty severe wild magic casting type stuff but it happens for all spell casters so like you could get like permanent disfigurements go insane and stuff like that wow um <laughs> yikes. not quite that extreme but like and, and, and it doesn't come across that doesn't you don't hit that as, as commonly as it sounds but like having like kind of more things like that where it's kind of more of that dark fantasy not just like wildly romping around but kind of being like oh man should i mess with this thing this might be like something really scary and evil <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely uh creates a little bit of pause um i i, I don't know i for some reason i just keep coming back like when we fought Yorgoth, we prepared a lot. Like, yeah. We did a lot of checking around and everything, but with this one, it just seems like we were like, ah, really old entity. Yeah, oh, we can, yeah. We can totally take it versus like just some barbarian. Like, I we think, did... I think it's kind of, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I think part of it's because we didn't have like kind of a pre campaign story really leading into this one as much. So we kind of like, so I feel like some people might have just kind of been like, oh, it's like a side thing, you know, because there wasn't like the multiple sessions beforehand of like, hey, there's this scary guy. Yeah. I've, it, it's just like, oh, some random cult leader for a little side thing, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> especially because fighting Jorgoth led into this with the bard who's like, oh, well, we beat that guy, and he's got this guy with him, and if he's asking us to do something, it's probably not going to be that much harder than fighting Jorgoth. Mm -hmm. And that was very wrong. <laughs> yeah. And it wasn't, it also wasn't the first time that we heard of Jormgard, that elf lady had also, I believe she was an elf, also was like, hey, you guys should go there. There's treasure. You guys will be fine. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so, uh, this is just going to be the last question. Uh, don't really have too much on it, on uh, this topic, unfortunately. But um, once we were in there and once the fight had started, do you think there was any way for all of us or just some of us to escape? Hmm. I don't know. I'd have to really think about it um coming into it like i don't think it was like a hard no necessarily but i don't at least looking back at the encounter from what i can remember i can't really uh, think of anything that seemed like a built-in possibility for escape if you know what i mean but like you know i knowing jesse like if he came up with something justifiable enough like yeah as long as we could justify it and it's not something completely crazy would work um personally i i really don't think we could have short of using right immediately like first person is like all right we're just gonna get out of here using this spell i have because yeah that that we, was the only way i could think of getting out was like magically somehow especially since we couldn't run out we we came down a waterfall into the room there was no way we were able to get into a hallway and just run out like we would have had to climb that's wasting around that would have made it worse in my opinion oh yeah oh definitely i mean it's like a giant flying you know ranged attack monster it's 
<laughs> you know, it's it's got it's got spells and stuff, um, and can fly around and chase us. So I don't know. We could, we could... yeah. Definitely should have used a lot more planning in this, but uh, actually kind of glad about the outcome. It's um, it's different than what we normally do, and um, I think it'll kind of remind us that we're not really all that invincible, and the Underdark is a very dangerous place. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah. I I I I think I think having a few of these in a in a campaign are always good to have. <laughs> of course. Well, uh. We might not get to learn a lesson from it because uh, it could be permanent, or it could not be. Well, you will uh, find out. But yeah, uh, well, maybe, maybe we can learn it again in another life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's hoping. All right. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining me. That's uh, everything I had for you. Um, do you have any questions for me? No, oh, no, it was great going over everything. All right. Well, wonderful to have you, and uh, see you on Monday. Uh, all right, on the dragon's turn, it is going to uh, bite Kalor, which is an automatic death fail times two, and then it's going to bite again, which is an automatic fail, and as it consumes Kalor, you see a brightness shine down its throat into the center of its chest. Hi, Sam. Uh, thanks for joining me for this uh, interview about our penultimate session where we faced down a ancient void dragon and uh, didn't really have a good ending, as some would say. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, kind of gauge your reaction, just because a TPK normally doesn't happen very often. And I uh, thought it'd be interesting to get everyone's thoughts on it and kind of parse it out. Um, so the first question I have for you is, uh, how did you feel once we had entered the room and Jesse had introduced the enemy to us and we kind of realized what we were up against? Um, I think we probably, I personally felt like we were more than likely not going to be leaving with every party member, at least, un at least conscious. Um, but I... It was it was kind of interesting because going in my character was completely charmed so there wasn't really any time for us to like plan exactly what we were going to do with the knowledge that we had and did we necessarily go in with the best plan probably not but so that's interesting we cuz i remember when we were in the tunnel, you started acting differently, and I was like, "We should probably investigate that." And we just we we never did. Yeah, I mean, my character has failed a few times on saves, and it's just kind of been, I would say, non problematic and not really something to worry about. But I I think had we not had my condition be known we might not have gotten the information or it would have taken us a lot longer yeah or or we could have ended up going into the chamber itself and finding out then and there that we were facing an ancient void dragon yeah um i definitely agree that we weren't necessarily prepared but i think it's uh, interesting once he introduced the the dragon, you, you still kind of thought we were going to get out of that, even though the only way I, out was up a waterfall. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I I thought there might have been a chance for maybe, like, a small scuffle, us realizing, hey, we're going up against, you know, an ancient dragon. Maybe we should talk. But we didn't go the route that I was anticipating and honestly I I wasn't expecting much of what we were doing to end well but I had some wishful thinking going in yeah I uh, can definitely agree with that up until we had to go mano a mano but uh, that kind of leads into my next question of 
Uh, is there something that you think we collectively as a group could have done to either avoid the fight with the dragon or just not have been in that situation? Um, Taken the knowledge that we were going to, you know, inevitably fight a a creature that has been around longer than any of us have ever existed um, for the sake of my my quite undead brother um, because he decided that he wanted to be, you know, knowing more about his power and his abilities. Like, had we not gone and fought and just kind of let him be, he might not have come out alive with us, but I don't know if we would have been in the situation we're in now. But... Right, but I also remember that he also had gotten charmed so i think there might be a little bit of yeah we didn't fully investigate something and it kind of had a couple steps helping us get pushed toward this yeah i have a feeling that we are i'm i'm completely agreeing with you i think there were definitely some things that were kind of trying to I wouldn't say aggressively guide us, but definitely guiding us down this path that we could have investigated more. Yeah, I think there was a lot of we need to do this fast kind of a feeling. I don't know why. Normally we plan out our stuff pretty well. This just seemed kind of like, a, okay, we need to go now kind of thing. Yeah. I, I yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think there was a little more haste in this decision making because normally we kind of take a step back we'll reassess the situation and maybe make a plan or two of how can we get how can we get the situation in our control and i don't think we did that quite nearly as much as we have in past scenarios not quite similar scenarios but in past situations where we had an issue that definitely posed a challenge to us. Yeah. Um, it was definitely an interesting encounter that we should have prepared more for. But um, leading into that, uh, how do you think that going through, I believe this is our first TPK, how do you think this will... Uh, shape your view or approach to different encounters as we move forward past this point specifically in character i was going to say in character i feel like cinna will probably end up being far more cautious about things i feel like this is definitely going to push some um some distrust on her brothers to you know know when to be smart and when to be safe but I also feel like this might show that our group isn't as invincible as we sometimes feel we are. Um, and maybe going forward, we try to strategize a little bit more to um, work with each other's weak or work with each other's strengths and try to um, try to raise up each other through our weaknesses. Like, a lot of us have healing spells, as far as I can tell. Um, and those, I feel, are underutilized or we're not using them during fights as much as we do afterwards. It's kind of a, oh, here, let me bandage your wounds. Instead, hey, hey, here's 15 points. Stay alive, stay alive. Well, I do, I do agree that we don't use our healing spells as much in battle i know i definitely don't as a cleric i probably should be doing that but i also feel like a lot of the encounters that we've had we haven't really needed to we use them when we have to like if someone's down but a lot of the time i feel like we're able to kind of mitigate the situation in a fast enough way where we don't need it immediately during battle it's more of like a supplemental this person just yeah. needs to get up for one more round kind of thing. Yeah, I can understand that. I just feel like utilizing... I, f I just feel like utilizing people's um, spells for more than, like, what we're n 
what we're known to d use them for. So kind of spreading out your spell slots to different spells that, you know, might not, you might not use them as much, but they're just as important. So like for me, I tend to not use healing spells nearly as often as I could, but as a bard, I feel like it's not going to come into play as much as a bard, but I also think it all, it plays on how you play your character too, because if you're not playing your character as how they would actually act and react to things and you're just playing as a almost like a self insert then i feel like that kind of puts into play too like are you playing as a character or are you just trying to keep the character alive as long as possible that is it's an interesting way of thinking about it i actually never thought of that before um i do like that though it is uh it's poignant I think maybe a little bit pointed at me as I've uh, <clears throat> died a few times. I'm not. I'm, I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying it for anyone. I'm. I just feel like as as someone who possibly made a bit of a self insert character last campaign because I didn't know what to do with myself or what to do with my character. It's like this time I wanted to play more of a like someone that's not as much like myself as other characters I've played in the past. Mind you, I've only ever had a, a small handful of characters to play as, so it's like, usually they're pretty self-insert, but that's just because I'm still relatively new to the whole D&D uh, &D 5th edition gameplay. But I think, I think it's also just kind of that mentality of, are you playing as your character or are you playing as you trying to keep your character alive because you're just so invested in them? Yeah, I, I can see that. Um, it's definitely a little bit harder to kind of get into a character, especially if you're, you know, playing a tabletop game, just because most of the actions that you would do aren't, are based on more or less luck like you can rig it in your favor with your stats but you you're playing just a character it's hard without having that self insert to be able to connect with a character so i do think having a self insert uh, of some point obviously not your whole self but there's always a little nugget of truth in every character about the person playing them at least i think so i i definitely I definitely agree. I think that, like, if you are, pl you like, you're always going to end up playing a character that has some sm some small part of you in them, regardless of how you play them, because I think that's almost a self-therapeutic way of not necessarily dealing with, with issues in the real world, but just kind of being able to look at it from almost a third-person perspective. Yeah. Possibly. No. I, I get it. I just, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know what else to say. But, about that. <laughs> but yeah, no, TPK, this is my first TPK, and it was just kind of, it hurt, but it was definitely something that I think was going to be inevitable, because at some point, something's everything, gonna yeah, something's going to happen, and I just have... I just, I'm very happy that this wasn't the end of our campaign. It's just the sudden death and consumption of all of our characters by this ancient void dragon. But it'll just be very interesting to see what the campaign looks like going forward from perspective of how our characters interact with one another, how we go about solving issues, and how the hell we're going to get back on the material plane. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, as technically, it is a TPK, but it's not f completely finalized yet. We still have a chance to come back. Hopefully, all of us are able to. So, I mean, there's always a chance we all make it out. Some of us do. It might end up not being a total party wipe. It might just be one or two of us completely die. But yeah, who knows? So um, I sorry. 
uh, sorry, I was just gonna say I and I appreciate the the ability for us to almost have this second chance at kind of redoing our mistakes and maybe changing how we're doing things in this campaign with these characters. Yeah, uh, I mean this uh, this campaign, uh, Rise of the Drow by AAW Games, uh, it seems to be a little bit different than a lot of other modules. Like we ran Curse of Strahd before, which is supposed to be kind of a, uh, I guess, grimdark kind of gothic can- horror. Yeah, but it's not quite as deadly. It can be very deadly, but you have to be either relatively new to the game or just running guns blazing and not really thinking too far ahead but for all intents and purposes we did as much research about this place as we could we just didn't we either didn't put two and two together or we thought we can definitely handle this then we just went in where it was obviously either someplace we were not supposed to be in now or someplace that these characters the characters running the campaign are not supposed to go to ever. Yeah. But um, on that note, do you think there is any way, once we were inside the Dragon's Lair, that we could have made it out? Either one of us, all of us, do you think we could have escaped? Or some of us could have escaped? I, I feel like there could have been potential that like it's a very small chance i feel like that there would have been a the ability for uh, some of us if not just one of us to escape i don't think all of us would have made it out of there regardless of what kind of strategy what kind of planning we had but i think had we maybe put a little bit more strategy in we could have saved a majority of the group i don't think I think there would have been a couple of casualties that definitely probably would not have been recovered, but I, I like to believe that there would have been a small glimmer of hope that we could have actually done what we tried to do. Well, you do have the teleport spell, if I remember correctly. I, I did, but I had a terrible role on initiative. Yep. I was very low on the initiative, and by the time that I got to my role, I was basically almost down and out, and it's like... Or wait! No, I... No. No, that was for the other... Those were for the other little guys. Never mind. I Yeah, no, I was definitely on the lower end of initiative, and I... I was trying to strategize with every single person's move, but it's just like, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm panicking. I like, I think had we maybe spread out a little bit more. So there was less concentrated hit on a majority of us that the dragon could have dealt. Then we might've had a better chance. Well, the issue was the layer action where the dragon was able to, lift us in the air and restrain us because we couldn't move yeah so once we were in and the lair action happened that was it couldn't move anything we could do was that was it yeah so um that's all the questions i have thanks so much for uh allowing me to interview you i uh, just glad we were able to uh get some insight into a tpk hopefully it'll help someone out there who either wants to run one or a player who wants to avoid one. Yeah, no, thank you for, thank you for having me. And hopefully this information does prove useful for anyone out there, but stay alive, roll high and don't die. (laughs) All right. See you Monday. Not get its breath weapon back and it is going to consume Cinemoira. Uh, What else is it going to do? Or aura of Madness on to Sporolina. I'm going to need a wisdom saving throw, please. Hey, Ryan. Uh, thanks for joining me uh, for this interview about our uh, most recent, well, I guess second most recent session uh, where we fought a void, ancient void dragon and uh, had less than an 
optimal encounter. Uh, unfortunately, you weren't there, but you were able to watch it. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you a few questions about uh, how you felt. Obviously, you have a little bit more vested interest than uh, just our standard viewer, as you have a character. Um, so how did you uh, feel once Jesse had introduced the enemy to the group? Oh, as soon as he introduced the enemy, uh, like when when he transformed, I was it was in an oh shit mood, and uh, we should as soon as he said ancient void dragon, I was like run. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, anything with ancient at uh, our level is probably not a good thing. So. Uh, Not without proper planning. <laughs> I think we need a little bit more than proper planning uh, for that one. Um, but do you think there was anything we could have done to avoid getting in that situation at all? Or do you think it was something that was uh, inevitable in that session? Um, I think we could have done a couple things different uh, before we decided to go in there. I think we got some information that... Uh, I think it was something about the dra the guy who owned the place was like 12,000 years old. And I think we kind of ignored that fact and kind of just went balls deep. Um, I think if we would have uh, maybe messaged Kalor and checked in with him or scryed on him to try and uh, ascertain how well he is, that would have been a better move. Um, I don't think that... I don't know if Kalor was going to die in there necessarily. So, you know, I think we jumped to conclusions. I think, you know, we had the information. We just jumped to different conclusions. And, you know, uh, considering what we were there for, uh, which was to get the aid of a god, that sounds like something that's 12,000 years old sounds like a god to me. Um, as far as, uh, like, when, we, when the fight happened, I think if we spread out more, like, we would have had a better chance. You know, like, Mark could have been very far away shooting a bow. Um, and we could have separated a little bit more because we got hit by the fire thing in one shot. You know, circle patterns and, you know, circling around the enemy would have been a little bit better of a choice, but he was able to teleport, so I get how that could be screwed up immediately. You know, so. Yeah. He, There's a couple uh, of things other than running. <laughs> 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 yeah, he, uh, definitely different than normal dragons, especially with uh, teleporting. I think we would have had a better chance if it was a normal ancient dragon, uh, just because oh. lateral movement yeah. is a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, take my O attack, you know, not like, poop, I'm over here. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> so, um, after watching that, um, obviously we weren't as prepared as we should have been, or we were a little bit too over eager to get in there as fast as we could. Um, do you think this uh, specific encounter and subsequent TPK will shape the way that you personally will try to approach uh, encounters in the future? Um, I mean, I think, you know, there. I find it a lot while we're playing that I, I, I seem like I feel like I'm interjecting too much because I'm trying to bring up points that I think people are missing. And I think if I was there this time, I maybe would have been able to interject and be like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. But uh, I don't think it will inter it'll change how I go into things. I think if I was there, I would have probably told us all to run, and I would have ran, probably. Um, I think that's, you know, it's just clearly seeing a situation and knowing when you're when you're down on your luck in that case, like, you need to get out. Um, I think I, I think Mark would have dipped immediately maybe tried to get Sporlina to go but he would have dipped for sure so <laughs> but i don't know right well that uh kind of brings me to my next question um once we were actually in the encounter we were in the room and the fight had started do you think all of us could have gotten away or do you think mostly just uh even Sporlina, maybe cinemar could have made it away and everyone else would have been up well i guess in the dragon rather than anything else i guess i guess it really depends um i think one of the things that was alluded to is that you know i think we i think we took a long rest before we got in there um 
I believe Sporlina had a use of Windwalk. I think as soon as we saw that dragon, I think if she had a cast of Windwalk, we should have used it immediately. But I think I don't think she had a high enough initiative to make that even worth it. I think she was down immediately anyway. Um because that would have been that would have been the key thing of like, all right, we're out of here, you know, as soon as we saw that. But um, as far as like who could get away, I know that I could get away because I can run ninety feet, you know, and well, hide, turn invisible, and run, you know. But I don't know about everybody else. Right. Well, and uh, if we ever get in that situation again, and you. Would you be okay with, say, someone staying behind to stop, um, I don't want to say the Ancient Void Dragon, because I assume we'll probably be smart enough not to go there for a good, good long time, but uh, fighting a creature or monster much higher level than we're able to take care of would you be okay as a player with someone saying my player my character is going to die i'm going to leave him behind so everyone else can get out i mean i could i i know that some characters could do that and and survive well and and help let us get out of there but i think at the point of you know sporlina has like 20 feet movement speed if you're going against something that's fast, there's no point in running. Like, let's just, you know, hold hands and die together like we just did. <laughs> you know? Um, Go down swing, you know, at least. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, but I think there there was a time when we were originally playing it. It's not on YouTube, um, but there was our very first mission. We went into, effectively, a cave, and I had this thought of, like, if we were being chased and we had to get out of there, um, bef- basically this cave opened up and there was going to be some bomb that was going to go off at the gate, uh, the entrance of it, because they didn't want to leave it open for more than 24 hours. I was willing to say, like, you guys run because I'm faster than you and, like, hold off any enemies that we were fighting and then I would run and try and catch up. I was willing to, like, put myself in that situation um, where it would be very, very difficult to get out, but... I don't, I don't think the self-sacrifice thing in D and D can be kind of ruined. I think with the fact that we have these spells that can just true resurrect somebody, you know. And I, I know it's expensive. I know we might not have it, but we probably could get access to somebody who does know it. Um, but that's, yeah, that's a whole different thing. I, I don't think the character self-sacrifice at this point is worthy. I think. A meaningful retreat with everybody involved is probably better and then like setting off a trap to slow them down over a time i think that's the more strategic method at least with where we are right now right um i agree with that uh i also think that the character sacrifice might not necessarily have to be the end like you cut off a finger give it to someone and say hey whenever you guys get out just you know bring me back with my finger because I believe, um, not Revivify, there's the other spell where all you need is a piece of their body, but they might not come back as the same race. I feel oh. like... Oh! So, you would essentially be sacrificing your character in their race. Like, they might not come back the same, exactly the same, but you still were able to give everybody else a little bit of time to you know, escape, hopefully, and make it out alive. Yeah, I think the spell you're talking about is called uh, Reincarnate. I believe it is a druid spell. Yes. Um, I know I know that with my, like, for example, I have a Waterdeep campaign where a character blew themselves up with, like, effectively grenades, you know, and all that was left was his feet inside some boots of elven kind. <laughs> you know, like, so we didn't have anything to really uh, bring him back with other than that. So they had to use True Res and in Waterdeep with all that money, you know, that's 25,000 gold and you have to hire a cleric to do that spell. You know, it was really expensive. But the, uh, I can look at, I'm looking at True Res, or not True Resurrection, but uh, how would I just say, Reincarnate right now? Yeah. And it's a, 
it's a thousand GP of rare oils and un. Okay, I don't want to say that word. That's weird. Um, but it's only a fifth level spell, and you know that that could work. Yeah, it's a, you know, I think that would be a way to do things. Definitely is uh, more of a last resort, just because um, if you're using a fifth level spell um, for that kind of thing. A um, thousand gold is kind of expensive, depending on the campaign you're running. So it's definitely a good last resort, maybe a two or three time use, but you're gonna get real expensive really fast. Yeah. Also, you need to. Oh, I. You have to have somebody who's actually going to be able to hold the person there. Like, just because Alora can do a ton of damage, right, doesn't mean that, that she would be a good one to leave behind because she doesn't have something like Sentinel. I don't think any of us have Sentinel right now. And that would be something that we'd absolutely need soon. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, you know, on the next time that I, we get a feat, I was actually planning on doing... I believe I was going to do alert so that we could never be surprised and I, you know, I'll get all the benefits of that. Plus, you know, I think I'd be at like, alert gives you what, a plus five to your initiative, I think. And uh, I would have a plus 11 to my initiative then. So <laughs> it's like, I'm going first. <laughs> you know, <laughs> But at the same time, when I get that, I feel like I'm steering the battle one way or another. And I don't, you know, I don't want to make it like, this is Ryan's show. You know what I mean? This isn't a show about Morg. It's a show about everybody and everybody's, you know, opinions and decisions, you know? Yeah. Well, that was uh, perfect. Thanks so much for uh, joining me on the, in this interview. I'm uh, glad to get your uh, input on this. And, uh, well, hope to uh, see you on Monday. Oh, yeah. I do have one question for you, though. Okay, shoot away. Do you have a spare character? Oh, always. I always have a spare character. <laughs> Everything... I, I could do everything right. Somehow, some way, I will find a way to die. Do you know what what is that? Can you tell us what the spare character is? Oh, I'm not I'm not going to share my trade secrets. That's uh, you guys will have to find out sometime. Hopefully not, but maybe. Hopefully not, but I will say that I do have a backup character. I've had one worked out with Jesse for a while. Uh, now one is specifically a tiefling ranger. Specifically, Gloomstalker. So, if Morg does die, it'll be okay. <laughs> you know, it'll be all right. Perfect. I will take my my three attacks the first round. <laughs> now, and if I missed on any of them, I can do it again. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> the dragon's turn is going to uh, try. To, it's going to eat. Use one bite attack on Morg. He is gone. Is going to use another bite attack on Kurtz. Automatic fail. Uh, Kurtz, no, 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 that's is not. That you have two bite attacks. It is the dragon uses its aura of madness and then it makes three attacks. Uh, all of them can be bites or claws or tail. Oh, that's weird. Okay, most dragons yeah. can only bite one. Well, also I'm curious how he's able to bite and consume. Like biting that, something and consuming it are two different the... things. Hey, thanks for joining me, Jeremy, for this interview. I uh, decided to do a little bit of uh, interviewing for uh, our recent TPK against the uh, Ancient Void Dragon, even though we might be able to get out of that, but we'll see. Uh, so I just wanted to ask you a few questions on uh, how you felt about it. If that's all right with you? No problem, Ulu. I'm glad to have everybody hear my wheel voice for once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, <laughs> just throw me off right away. Um, so for the first question, uh, how did you feel once Jesse uh, revealed the actual enemy we would be fighting? So um, <clears throat> I've been DMing for uh, roughly about four or five years and uh, playing for about seven. So as soon as, I mean, and one of the, things the first like D D based things i uh, ever uh kickstarted was the tome of beasts by um cobalt press and <clears throat> actually ran ran a podcast called hail the void so of course the void dragon was one of the things from that book that i was very familiar with and uh so as soon as it turned out he said ancient void dragon i was like yeah we're all dead <laughs> 
yeah, uh, I kind of got that. I didn't know too much about it. Uh, obviously, I'm not as well versed in D and D as you are. So all I heard was ancient, and I knew it was probably not going to end well for us. Um, but do you think there was anything we could have done uh, to avoid getting in that situation? Uh, well, I'm not going to come down too hard because, uh, you know, sometimes players just miss sessions and you can't, you know, do anything about it. But ha being down, like me playing the rogue and not really knowing his character, uh, that was that was a huge, uh, huge uh, red flag. Like we we definitely were technically a man down for that fight. Um, past that, I mean, obviously, first of all, we should never have let... Uh, uh, Kalor go off with the with that with a dude by himself in the first place. That should we should never have let that happen. We should have gathered more information inside the village and like talked to people, put together stories. Um, yeah, I mean, waited another day, used another legend lore to try and find out something like there was a lot we could have done uh, in the fight itself besides being a man down i mean i think we we hit it hard as hard as we could um yeah it was just it was the the biggest problem was not knowing what kind of drag what kind of enemy it was going to be um and then even if we knew it was a dragon not knowing what type of dragon we would not have known what layer actions to expect uh, and without like freedom of movement, uh, that fight was going to be rough no matter what level we were. Yeah, uh, I definitely think we could have done a little bit more preparing. Um, I do remember uh, Cinemoira and Kalor under some type of spell or being charmed. Uh, we never really investigated that at all. I think that kind of plays a little bit into it too. Uh, I don't think necessarily Kalor would have gone on his own if he wasn't charmed see i don't know i don't know if it was a charm effect or what um because they never really acted in a in one way or another in my opinion it didn't seem like they were acting strangely and unless their their characters are acting completely out of order then if we were to have inspected that or like try to figure out what had affected them that would have been a little meta gamey in my opinion so i i don't think that there was much we could have done <laughs> done in that regard all right, yeah, I can definitely see that. I just, um, I remember thinking Senna was acting a little bit more interested in everything than normal, but not really enough to be overtly suspicious about it. But um, normally, a lot of our fights are relatively easy outside of, obviously, encounters like this or when we're fighting something that we know is going to be a bit stronger. So did you enjoy the fight, regardless of the uh, ending? Um, I would say yes. Uh, as a you know primarily melee fighter, um, it that that kind of fight could be extremely frustrating, um, especially when the layer action is oh you're just restrained and there's nothing that you can do about it. There's no save like you're just restrained, and uh, that could be rough. Um, maybe if we had gone another round, uh, I could have hit another nat twenty doing massive amounts of damage. Um. You know, maybe another couple heals could have gone off and we could have uh, maybe survived. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I It's been a, a few weeks since, or it's been a week? Has it been two weeks since the last time? It's been a week. It feels like two weeks. Yeah. But I don't I don't remember how many of his legendary resistances we, uh, we burnt through. But, um, yeah, I mean, burn, burn through those legendary resistance with stupid shit and then, you know banish or charm the fucker and see what happens like you never know yep there's always uh it uh, fights can always end up one or two ways i mean even against yeah, no, I, something that strong i'll say we had definitely like a less than 15 percent chance of defeating that thing but there was a chance and that's the there was a chance it. absolutely yeah you never know the, the dice could decide so um obviously I don't have a whole lot of questions uh, so this is just going to be my last one. Uh, do you think we could have escaped once the fight had happened? Perhaps. Um, normally, dragons are super difficult to get to, like, run away from. However, uh, we had just come from, like, a 
catacomb like area with like tiny hallways we so we would have either a forced him to take human form um and chase us that way or b try to uh have him basically follow us out a different way thus exposing you know what he truly is um to his cultists maybe they would have you know jumped on us and fed us to him no matter what or maybe they would have turned on him who knows but uh it's it is possible we i mean i think sporlina even had um uh uh, transport via plants prepared um so if we had found some kind of large mushroom or underground tree it's possible she we could have literally just teleported to uh the fungal forest but you know it it happened fast i think there was like le- like three rounds uh of that that fight and we were all dead well, three rounds where everyone might have still been up after that point it was just well, this is where we are. Um, yeah. So, um, do you think we'll be able to reverse the TPK and be able to make it out of, I assume we're in the Astral Sea right now? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, um, yeah, some weird, like, I know in, in at least the Cobalt, see, this is an AAW's game, so it's their own interpretation of a Void Dragon, but in the Cobalt Press uh version of the void dragon there I, I think i went back and read it and there's nothing in there that specifically said like when you swallow a creature it, it, it is deposited into the astral sea but the void dragons do have a connection to the astral sea and and to that sort of space in between so i uh, it's possible i mean technically it, as long as you know we spent 24 hours here uh we could planar shift i believe sporlina had that ability um but uh or no maybe we're we're two levels away from her being able to do that so yeah we we would not be able to get out of there without help i'm not still not 100 percent sure if it would have been a better idea to just actually help these three ladies and then have them transport us out or if you know we took the right right tactic and attacking these witches um yeah uh not super looking forward to this fight um, didn't seem like it was going to go super well last week, but hey, we can always turn it around, I think. Yeah, and I mean, they all have legendary resistances, which is really rough. Usually, I, I don't know uh, how much, you know, uh, AEW put into this or what, but like usually if you have multiple creatures with legendary resistances, they each only ha- they have less legendary resistances. Like, like say you're fighting uh, two, like, CR20 creatures that would normally have, uh, you know, three legendary resistances each, you would have them both have two to sort of give your players, otherwise you're you're spending four rounds just trying to burn through the resistances, and that's if they fail their saves, which sometimes is impossible, depending on their fucking stats, so. Um, hopefully Kurtz and Alora can physically manhandle them, uh, because I'm assuming that their strength decks are not very high, uh, but they are going to have high saves for wisdom, intelligence, and uh, charisma, I'm assuming. Yeah, so spells are definitely not the way to go with uh, these three ladies. So um, that's all the questions I have for you for today. Uh, Thanks so much for joining me, and uh, hope to see you on Monday. Absolutely. Hey, Reed, thanks for joining me for uh, the interview uh, on our, I guess, most recent debacle of the tpk against the ancient (laughs) void dragon uh so i'm just going to ask you a few questions get your uh thoughts and feelings on the fight so uh the first question i have for you is uh how did you feel once jesse had told us exactly what we were fighting uh i knew it was gonna be bad (laughs) uh i mean i i feel like this void dragon is kind of different than void dragons i've read about uh, for like a couple of different reasons, uh, but any I knew it was going to be a rough fight. You know, if we were like level eighteen fighting it, we might have had a chance, but <laughs> we were way too we're way too weak for that. So yeah, I have a feeling this was uh, an area we were not quite supposed to go to yet. But a lot of decisions just we made we just weren't ready for. Yeah, the decision was made. Yep. Sometimes you you make uh oh sometimes. <laughs> um, it was a big uh-oh. That was 
Real big uh-oh. So, uh, do you think there was anything that we could have done uh, to avoid the fight or avoid going into that room? To avoid the fight? Yeah, for sure. I think we could have... Uh, I mean, here's the thing, right? Dragons generally are greedy and power-hungry and very arrogant. Could we have played to that and maybe saved ourselves and gotten out of there? Perhaps. Uh Step one would have never been to just never go in there and to definitely not let Kaylor go in there by himself. Um, love him, but no, that was bad. He was getting gassed up is really the problem, right? He was all gassed because he's like, oh, yeah, I'm a sorcerer. They want me. <laughs> you know, I have whatever it is. Uh, so really, we should have just never let him go in there by himself and uh, definitely asked a lot more questions. We kind of just like let it happen and then retrospectively I was like, oh, this was probably not a good idea and then proceeded to break into a dragon's lair, which is also not like a great thing either. So Yeah. I do remember the monologue before the fight, uh, him saying <laughs> he wasn't actually going to eat Kalor, so uh, retros like, in retrospect. Yeah. I think if we had done nothing, it would have been fine. Right. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, for sure. And then I, he was like, oh, but you know what? Maybe you guys are more powerful, and I wouldn't want Kaylor to be more powerful than me. I couldn't have let that happen. And then it was like, uh-oh, we fucked up. We fucked up. Yeah, it was not the best idea. But um, since normally our encounters aren't, this hard uh did you actually enjoy the fight once it had started as a player yeah i mean i i think dragon fights are always fun i mean i feel like fights where you're like i'm going to die there's a couple of things right it makes you one creative uh creative on like how you try and use your spells how you're trying to keep other people from dying around you and to keep yourself from dying i think i think uh creativity blossoms and and fear full moments if you will um i think uh obviously i would have let the fight to go differently i i will say that i don't feel like that encounter is really programmed for you to win it uh you know i don't know it does seem a little plot armory the whole thing seemed a little plot armory to me but uh you know, it, it was a good fight nonetheless. Yeah, and I think uh, if we get out of it, um, it kind of, I guess as players, we know a little bit more than our characters, but I think it kind of teaches them that maybe we shouldn't just be gung-ho and go guns blazing into every situation, which we more right. or less have been doing. Yeah, sometimes it's nice to it's a it's a good humbling reminder that you're actually not as invincible as you think you are. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, yeah, this is just going to be the last question I have for you. Unfortunately, I don't really have a whole lot of questions. But um, no, that's great. Do you think that we could have escaped either some of us, all of us, or maybe just you? Um. I stayed up the most out of everybody. So, yeah, I think I probably could have escaped by myself. I wouldn't have. I mean, Re, like, I, me personally would have. Sperlina wouldn't have. <laughs> uh, I think if, if we had decided the moment the dragon turned into a, a void dragon in front of us, and we were like, oh, not cool, and would have immediately tried to leave in some way. Uh, we might have been able to get out with limited casualties, but I don't think all of us would have been able to get out of there scot free. Period. Well, uh, so <laughs> yeah. Um, my takeaway from that is I don't really think we would have been able to escape once that fight started because we did go down the waterfall. So we either would have had yeah. to climb back up or use some magic which does take a little bit of time to ramp up so right um, yeah. i mean like so i had like gaseous form prepared and then i had transport via plants prepared so i might have been able to gaseous form us but it takes i think a full minute for that to happen 
which is 10 rounds of combat, which I don't think we even made it to 10 rounds of combat. Yeah, I think we made it to around th so. three or four before it was like, okay, this is this is the before end. Before we were getting consumed by the void, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, that's all the questions I have for you. Thank you so much for uh, joining me, and uh, hope to see you on Monday. Woo! Are you rolling? 18 will miss, 18 will miss. All right, it is its turn. It is going to blast you with a stellar flare. You both fail your dexterity saving throws automatically. This is first fire. That's and not true. Yeah, resistance. Yeah, resistance. You're restrained. Restrained. Restrained, it makes it at disadvantage. It doesn't no. make it automatic. No. Oh. It just, it just reduces your movement speed to zero as far as I know. The creature has disadvantage on dexterity saving okay. throws. Either way, I'm down. Ah. Okay. Yeah, I probably, either way, I'm down as well, so it doesn't matter. And you feel uh, yourself yeah. after the... Oh, wow, nice roll. <laughs> the DC is a 24, so... <laughs> I mean, it's a natural 20 that always saves. No, this is not. Since I don't believe when? that's for saving throws. It's, that's only for uh, attacks. Oh. Per rock. But anywho, as the Stellar Flare engulfs you both, Alora, the Bone Golem, and Sportlina, or what's left over of you, it sucks you back into its mouth, and into the chest, and you all see darkness. Hi, guys. <laughs> I hate you. I hate you so much right now. You do not understand. That was pretty funny. All right. Well, <sighs> I hope you guys have secondary characters. Good job. Uh, we will see somewhere. you all next week. I'm kidding. You all look about you. And you hear nothing. You look around. And finally you look up. And you can see this beautiful vortex. Darkness surrounds it. And a nebula surrounding it. You all feel some kind of a pressure on your body. As you try to move. But it's so, so heavy on you. You feel around you, and it, it seems like some sort of a sand you are in. As you lift yourself up out of the sand, you look around and you are on what seems to be a platform. That's gonna. Is that Joe that. Dirt? Gee. Don't worry about it. And you look up, and this platform is all about stars that is slowly deteriorating into what looks to be a black hole. This platform goes on for quite some way, but it's hard to see in this darkness. And that's where we'll end the episode. <laughs>